I'm about to act in my first uh, Shakespearean uh, play. I only had one shot in uh, Tromeo and Juliet. And uh, this is a uh, Midsummer's Night Dream, and apparently the, uh, the, the film is in iambic pentameter. It's been rewritten to some extent. Uh, about 5% of the dialogue has been rewritten, I believe. It's 95% Shakespeare's word, 5% mine. Usually I play doctors and, uh, and drunken uh, bums, uh, and in this particular one I'm uh, doing some Shakespeare, so that's interesting. But I think it'll be interesting to, to learn how uh, you know, these young people uh, with no money, uh, I think the budget is under, well under 10,000. We're doing it for about six grand, so that's, it's out of pocket, just what we made, you know, paychecks and stuff. When you have absolutely no budget whatsoever, you can't stop traffic. You can't ask cops to pull people over. You can't, you know, ask people to leave a park bench that you want to shoot at. We were stopped by security outside of a children's hospital because I had a goat puppet and they said that I had an animal with me. With that kind of thing, you just really, it really has to be a very sort of Taoist, you know, philosophy. That you roll with it, and when something changes, you blow with the wind. Today we are shooting the opening scene of the movie. Uh, it takes place in a church. We're shooting on a Panasonic DVX100B. We're shooting on two of those. HD? It's, it's, uh, it is not HD. Uh, it's SD. What is SD? It's a uh, standard digital. Shooting schedule, it's, it, we're planning about two months total. We're shooting two full weeks and then we're taking uh, a week off shooting one day. And then we're uh, taking a, a couple of other days off and then we're shooting uh, sporadically throughout the, uh, the next month. It's usually at nighttime. Um, we started last week and uh, we're going till the middle of July. Did, did we get all the footage done, Luke? Luke, did we get everything shot? Just about, yeah, I think we're pretty much on it. You didn't cut anything? Uh, maybe like one line or one shot, but uh, yeah, time. Time is a factor. What's interesting is that you've got Luke, who's camera. And seems to be camera and directing, and then he's playing uh, Demetrius, main part. Luke, Luke is uh, mainly a director. He has a degree in acting uh, the theater. We called in a favor, we uh, asked him to, to act in this, and uh, so he's helping us out, and he's acting, and he's, he's helping direct, I think, because it's, you know, it's a big cast. How is it to be an actor and cameraman? I've never seen that. It's difficult. Definitely. Why did you do that? For help. No, why did you? Why not just get a cameraman? And, or which, which would you have preferred, acting or camera or both? I like doing it all. Can you guys get into uh, close into position? Everybody in the cast and crew all does everything. Everyone is multitasking. I work as production manager, DP, lighting, sound, props master. I pretty much do a little bit of everything and that's what it takes to run a, a small no budget movie is that everybody has to do a little bit of everything uh, and even the actors contribute. They sure do. All right. When we get in here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So get in here, and it's, you know, your father shall be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form of wax, by him imprinted. Your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure. <laughs> District Attorney Theseus. Oh, I guess somebody else comes home.
inspiration, and you kept the weight off. How did you do it? It's all about moderation, my boy. Cue cards. Good thing to know when you have old, broken down, low budget filmmakers who've taken crystal meth before the shoot. What are we doing, Meth? Uh, what are we doing, Jake? Uh. I've taken a guest star who is only here for a few hours, uh, you know, just fortuitous nature, and I'm getting audio, which means just going to a nice, uh, quiet location, just so that uh, in case something doesn't quite match up or I don't have a good clean feed, um, I can always cut to the canned audio and cut to close-ups of uh, other actors, you know, mugging and, you know, making reactions and so forth. That's done for safety purposes in case something went wrong, but probably in this case it's done for what they call the sucking acting. <laughs> My acting probably was not very good. Your father should be as a god. So this way he can sort of cut around my like crappy. And look who's... He doesn't suck. Here's some talent Not right here. All. Here no is some major, major whatsoever. talent. Elizabeth. How did it go, Elizabeth? It went so well. I had so much fun. And the light is a great co-star, so... Mm, thank you. The church is over. We shot the church in a whole four hours. This is the crazy outdoor setup. That's, uh... It's right behind the church. Uh, we have a permit uh, that allows anything shooting outside. Seriously, 7 in the morning till 10 o'clock p.m. in residential areas. Uh, about to shoot Lloyd some more. Uh, uh, Lloyd's ready to go. And uh, yeah, let's see how he does. Action. My Lloyd. Is, is this, is this my daughter here? This, this, this is my daughter here, my daughter here asleep. Enough, enough, you have enough. I beg the law, I beg the law upon her head, God. They would have stolen away. Yes, they would, Demetrius. I, I wonder if they're being here to get rid of uh, can I do that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, just, let me, let me just yeah Luke is now uh, holding cue cards. He even does that. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we share duties here. If you ever shoot at a church, make sure that uh, it doesn't have a long, annoying chime every hour. Yeah, that's really affecting our shoot right now. They had uh, submissions online on lacasting.com and I self-submitted, went to the audition and got the role. Do you have an agent? I do, I do. But somebody always told me that an agent gets 10%, therefore he does 10% of the work, therefore you should be doing 90% of the work, which is absolutely true. Almost all the work I get is from self-submitting and from self-promoting and working. A lot of people get lazy. They get an agent, they get a manager, they think they can sit back and relax. It's not the case at all. Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hernia. Stand forth, Demetrius. This man has my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. You know, the, the lines are different than how we talk in real life, of course. So just really clarifying all, all the intentions and making everything very clear and real and honest, I think. That's, uh... Because it's, it's not easy when it's real dialogue to make everything truthful, and good acting is truthful. And Shakespeare is good when it's truthful. For a second. Okay. Still recording perfectly, Frank? Just turn around, don't, don't go forward at all. Recording. Action. Why should not I then prosecute my rights? Demetrius, all about to two of head, and he loves to meet his daughter Helena, and, and one her soul, and, 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 and she's sweet lady dose. 
devoutly dote, starts an idolatry upon this spotted and constant man. I must confess, being overfull of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come. And Aegeus, go with me. We had a lot of fun. I ran into the um, glass this morning. Sounds good. My head. Today is July 23rd, and, uh, 2008, and uh, have, have you wrapped Midsummer's Night Dream, Jake? Uh, no, we have not. I'd say we probably have about 60 to 70 percent done. Uh, the C plot line and the B plot line still have yet to be touched. We have to make sure that the actors can shoot and that we have the location at the same time. So it, it's all a bunch of uh, stuff you got to mix together. So first you got to make sure you got the location, but then you got to make sure the actors can do the loca uh, can work in that day, and you got to make sure everything's together at the same time. So uh, it's like we planning a moon landing. Yeah, basically. And unfortunately, as when we had Lloyd for those shoots, we were trying to get everything rammed into two weeks because in Los Angeles permits are so expensive and so time sensitive that you need to have you know everything blocked within a two week period. And unfortunately, it gave us no time in between to set up for the next day's shoot. So I would be up until five in the morning, touching up on a puppet, uh, building props for the next day. And unfortunately, wasn't able to focus as much on the script itself and on the actual directing. So um, I can't stress enough in terms of if you are gonna try to get a permit for a say a Los Angeles shoot, to make sure that everything you can have before that date begins, have it all done. Otherwise, it's going to be 5 a.m. nights, and you're going to be angry the next day, and it's going to be a lot more strenuous, and it's not going to be as productive. My mistake was um, feeling sympathy for this actor who was not emotionally ready to play such an emotional character, and feeling the need to constantly help with the emotional support of this person, and then being drowned in like the constant need of attention from this person and like not being able to focus on my own character oh. because this person constantly needed my attention to fulfill whatever she was missing in her character. There isn't really a way of, of knowing if, if a cast is going to stay with you the entire time. I mean, it's, we asked for a two month commitment. It's, you know, it's going over two months right now. Uh, basic thing you can do is, is hire people that you feel that you can trust and, and hire people that, that you, that you, Believe, believe in your project and will stick with you in the long run because they want to see the project is finished, is finished just as much as you do. Did you have any special effects uh, that you worked with on this movie? Not on this movie in particular, but uh, there was a commercial that uh, Jacob and I had shot uh, about a year ago where uh, Jacob was uh, laid on fire. We're oh. still trying to sneak a fire burn into this yeah, one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping that we can find some place logical to put, or illogical to put a, a fire burn in this one. And one of the things that I've always noticed that I look at is when I bring up a DVD, which most low budget films, if you're lucky, you'll get a DVD because odds are you won't necessarily get a theatrical release. It just doesn't happen like that anymore. So if somebody's scanning the chapters on that DVD, one of the things that I look for is a difference between them. This one's in a church, that one's on a beach. Holy crap, there's a guy lit on fire. The one major difference you'll find between filming in New York and filming in Los Angeles, in, in, in Los Angeles, which is the city of film, people like will not respect it, which is so ironic that this is where it came from and no one has any respect for it, especially the people who just live here and are not in the industry. So I don't know if it's a jealousy thing or just like a need to be rebellious, but um, people, in my experience, will honk in the middle of a scene if you're shooting on the side of the road, will scream at you, will do all these horrible rude things that, you know, obviously we wouldn't wish upon any filmmaker. However, it was taken to another level one night while we were filming on the side of the street when a bunch of kids thought that, you know, 
that paintball gun that they had in the back of the car would be a great way to disrupt the filming. So I'm getting them all laid out. I'm like, I want you on this line on the sidewalk because I, I can't put down actual uh, marks on the ground. You know, I don't have time for that in this kind of guerrilla style of shooting. So I'm like, you here, you here, you here. Okay, we need to get this. We need to roll on. We don't have enough time. And then sure enough, right when everything's set, I'm looking through that viewfinder and your focus tightens down and you're looking at it. And then all of a sudden I see Ashley here. And I'm hearing pap, 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 and then it, on my own side, I feel that sharp pain. I knew the sound of the paintball gun, so my first instinct was, oh shit, somebody's, oh, <laughs> like shooting a paintball gun, and bam. Oh. I honestly, for a brief moment, thought I had been shot for real, and as the director, as the captain of the ship, I honestly thought, I was like, I, I have gotten someone shot. I had to call the cops. In the meantime, I'm sitting there thinking about how, boy, that really didn't sound like a real gun. But wait a minute, everybody that's been shot always says that they, it doesn't sound like a real, the one that gets you always sounds like, pat, like it'll just sound like a cab gun. And I grab and yeah, sure enough, feel the wet substance. And I'm thinking, oh shit, I've actually been shot. And you lift it up <laughs> and in the crazy LA lights, it looks red, I don't yeah. know. And then all of a sudden I'm kind of fingering around this thing and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't there's, even no have, there's no hole in my t-shirt. No. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> in the long run, though, I was really happy with everybody. You know, uh, we just had to take a moment, sit for a second. And what was interesting, one of the actresses that wasn't hit actually was more concerned for Ashley than I think Ashley was of herself. Yeah, and was totally. said, why don't we just wrap tonight? And when you're looking again at that two-week permit window, you can't. And what was really cool was, you know, Ashley took a moment, everybody took a, you know, a timeout, but didn't let the momentum of the shoot die, and we just went ahead and finished it.